hi same spot different day oh. got fuzzy zombie from working in the house hi guys welcome back to my channel it's a little bright today i do have hair i know it doesn't look like it but i do so you hopped on here for another james bible study i can't believe we're almost done with this already i can't believe this month is almost over already that is so crazy this year is going so fast so today is study of james 4. if you or if this is the first video of mine that you are ever watching make sure that you i will try to leave them up in my card somewhere here um if you haven't watched my previous bible studies before on the rest of james um definitely kind of check those out maybe before you do this one that way you can study james in order um yeah james is one of my favorite books of the bible and i'm just really happy i'm kind of sad we're almost at the end so before i start if you have watched my videos before you've heard this disclaimer so you can skip past it but i just want you guys to know that i am in no way trying to preach to you i am not a preacher in any sense i am just studying with my friends online that is what i'm doing help other people hear god's word and hear it in different ways and i want to hear the way you guys hear it so if you have any points or anything i didn't um talk about uh that you think i should have that i missed in you know the chapters that we're studying definitely comment them down below without further ado we are just going to get right into james chapter four so james four is titled proud or humble and verse one read what is the source of wars and fight among you don't they come from your passions that wage war within you you desire and do not have you murder and covet and it cannot attain you fight and wage the war you do not have because you do not ask you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures so that is saying like we're asking god for things and not asking with the right intentions um and i actually read this sticky note because it kind of applied with the last one of like controlling the tongue and like with our wisdom and everything but this sticky note that i had in my bible actually kind of goes with this as well you know not being able to conceive or not having a job or going through a hard living situation he's not giving us this trial for us to suffer he's giving it to us for us to endure in this trial and then grow closer with him so we don't fall into the ways of the world that is why we just need to be aware of what we're praying for verse 4 you adulterous people do you know that friendship with the world is hostility towards god so whoever wants to be friends with the world becomes the enemy of god or do you think it's without reason that the scripture says that the spirit he made to dwell in us envies intensely? You, we can't be godly and worldly at the same time. We need to pick one or the other. God doesn't want the best of both worlds. The flesh is a constant battle for us because we hear in our ears and see it in our eyes all the time, like on our phones and we're hearing it all over the TV and, and movies and everything, what the world is saying we should be like. So it's hard to go against the grain. We have, and this, and this can be taken in so many different ways, but we have a jealous God. We have a God that is jealous because he wants our undivided attention. He is jealous when the world wins. He wants us all the time. He doesn't want the world to get us 50%, him to get us 50%. He wants us 100% of the time. Now I'm on to verse six, but he gives greater grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Look at Jesus. He was a normal man, like to the eye, you know, to the eyes knowing. He looked like an average man. He didn't, he was the wealthiest man with wisdom and knowledge and could have anything he wanted, but he didn't show it. He acted and and held himself to a standard that he deserved grace, that he, grace that he didn't even need. Jesus always gave grace to the smaller and to the weak and to the poor. And we are supposed to do the same because that's what God would do for us. Verse seven, therefore submit to God, resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. And like we have this sense of pride and I'm not sure where it came from because without God, we wouldn't have anything so I'm not really sure what we've been thinking but that ain't it sis that ain't it don't criticize one another brothers and sisters anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law if you judge the law you are not a doer of the law but a judge 
there is one lawgiver and one judge who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge your neighbor? This is saying God is the only one good enough to judge us. We have no right waltzing around judging other people because God is the creator. God is the only one who can judge us. And like, who are we to be judging them? Because we are all flawed. We are all imperfect. Who are we to judge our neighbors? Oh, the next heading is our will and God's will. And it is, it starts with verse 13. Come now you who say, today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such city and spend a year there and do business and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be. For you are like a vapor that appears for just a little while and then vanishes. This one's kind of hard for me and I don't want to say I make plans for the purpose of profiting or gaining anything, but I am a planner person. I'm a very type A organized. I like to know what's going on. I like to plan. And this is kind of hard for me to hear because I want to apply this, but it's not the easiest thing. And this is God just asking like, why are you planning? Like, who are you to say that you are even going to wake up tomorrow? Like, we should be thankful for each and every breath and day that we have. And here we are planning days and weeks and months and years ahead. Like, who are we to be making this for, for, for personal gain, for worldly gain? Who are we, you know? Um, down to 15, it says, instead you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So it is sin to know the good and yet not to do. So God's will needs to be over our own. We can't keep putting what we want and what we think we need and what our plans are over what God's plans are for us. We're all so quick to brag about our lives, but without not, without God, we will be nothing. Like we keep bragging about all the stuff we have in life, but we wouldn't have any of it without God. So instead of bragging about what we have, give the glory to God, show him, say, if I wasn't for God, I wouldn't be in this situation. Or thanks God for putting me here and put that out into the world. Don't put out in the world that you did this because you didn't do this because without God, we are nothing. So that just really, yeah, I think that really puts a lot of, of understanding into um, the reading and I hope you guys enjoyed this study. I cannot believe that next week is the end of May. So that is actually all for this video. If you want to come back for next week's video, go ahead and subscribe down below and turn on that little bell and you'll get notified when I upload the study of James chapter five. So that is all for this video guys. I will see you next week. I love you all. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy.